Hey, I'm Tom at Sweet Maria's and I wanted to talk about weighing your green coffee batch in roasting and calculating weight loss after. Um, first of all, using a, a scale in roasting is really important. One of the main reasons you want to do that is because the green coffee in a way is part of your roast system. It changes the thermodynamics and so if you're trying to adjust your heat on your roaster, you're trying to adjust your air, but you also have one batch that you're roasting 120 grams and one batch you're roasting 100 because you kind of scooped it out, you're getting inconsistent results and it's kind of undercutting the adjustments you're making on your roaster. So it's really better to eliminate one of those variables by weighing your green coffee every time. So when I do my sample roasting, I actually roast 100 grams. So if I get 85 grams out of my roast after roasting, um, I know it's 15%. But if you have odd numbers, uh, it becomes a little more difficult. So here's a formula you can use right here. And let's just go through this together. I have my digital scale right here. Let me zero it, tear it out. And in fact, I have 94.7 grams. Let's, let's definitely go into the weeds on this one, into the uh, fractions here. And um, I always like to leave my same vessel on there and 80.3 grams. You know, this is basically what every commercial roaster is doing as well. To, to understand and be consistent about the green coffee they're putting into their big old Probat roaster and knowing what their weight loss is so they know if in their production roasting they're hitting the same target every time. And there's no reason why home roasters shouldn't do this too. It just takes a minute. So the formula is you take your green coffee original weight, you subtract your roasted coffee weight, you get that, you divide it by the original green weight, and you multiply it by 100 just to move the decimal point. So let's do that here. Uh, 94.7 minus 80.3 is 14.4. I am going to divide that by 94.7. And just to move the decimal plate, I'm going to multiply by 100 and I have 15.2. Now I know for a lot of people like incorporating a scale into their brewing and their roasting just feels like one step too far, like you've made this one step more complicated, but it becomes second nature once you get used to it. And the reward of it, consistent batches, suddenly having the changes that you make on your roaster actually makes sense because you have the same batch of coffee in every time. And, uh, and the same in brewing is getting consistent results really makes it worth it. Um, this digital scale that we sell is under $20. So it's really inexpensive, it's rechargeable. And um, yeah, there's really no reason not to do that. So what are the drawbacks or caveats with roasting coffee by weight. Well, one issue is that if you have a coffee that the original moisture content is 10 and percent, and then we have some outliers like Yemen coffees, some Ethiopia coffees, they come in and they measure 9% and they're excellent coffees, they're perfectly prepared, but that original moisture content will throw off your readings and it'll make it harder to compare one coffee to another. So that's really only the case with a few, a few origins, sometimes some Ethiopians, Yemen, and perhaps a couple other coffees. Most coffees are in the same range of 10 and a half, 10 to 10 and a half, 11 percent moisture. So it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty minor caveat in terms of um, getting consistent results with your coffee roasting. So use a scale, thanks.